I want you all to see why Tony is such a force of nature. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Theodosia is my very favorite event just because it covers the controlling force that controls everything. Get ready for you. Get nervous. There's no surprise. Look, I'm like in a space right now. My job is to dominate the problem and bring out what's really strong. Childhood beating. Constant pain. Sexual abuse. Father abandoned him. Mother was murdered by stepfather. Yeah. Hostage for three days. Are you ever concerned about giving the wrong piece of advice? I'm looking for what's real. No my friend Tony Robbins is here. We had to free yourself from fears and stress. And the number one thing you could do right now to build real wealth. Y'all interested? Woo! He's back there getting ready. Welcome, Tony Robbins. I am so happy you are here. I'm thrilled to be here. Hello, everybody. How are you? So you watch Tony backstage. He's getting into the right state. You know, I've been to the seminars. It yes. is remarkable. We all see you as an incredibly successful man, but it didn't start that easy for you. And I'd love, if you don't mind, I know it's emotional, but share a little bit about how your upbringing made you the man you are now. Well, I had uh, a really beautiful soul for a mom, but she was also addicted to alcohol and prescription drugs. And when she got on those stage, she was quite violent. And I have a younger brother, younger sister, five and seven years younger. And so I became a practical psychologist because I had to figure out how to know how to manage her state emotionally and psychologically. Because when she lost it, she would smash my head against the wall till I bled, or she'd put liquid soap down my throat till I threw up. But honestly, I suffered so much, that's why I'm here, you know? Uh, if my mom had been the mother I hoped she'd be, then I wouldn't be the man I'm proud to be. Because it made me hungry to find answers. It made me hungry to, if I see anybody suffering, I gotta do something. And I don't have to at this stage, but it's still in my life, it's in my blood. And so I'm really grateful that it happened. It sounds weird, but I am grateful because I think you gotta find the higher meaning in anything. Otherwise you'd have suffered. And so I've done it with myself so I can help other people do it as well. So, Tony, as you know, has been in a leadership position, Feeding the Hungry in America. In fact, this book, which is one of the best books I've ever read, it's called Unshakable. Thank you. All the proceeds are going to feed the hungry. But there's a selfish reason that I think people should learn about Unshakable. Because you talked to 50 of the world's leading financial experts. The, the people who are actually out there making a ton of cash. Yeah. And I'd love, if you don't mind, just to break it down. For example, what is the number one piece of advice they gave you? Well, the number one thing for the average person is they have to stop being a consumer and become an owner. You know, most of us work our life and we work so hard, but we're all trading time for money, and it's a terrible trade. And so the mindset is to say, if you own an Apple phone and you don't own Apple, or more importantly than Apple, let's say the index, then you're just wasting your time because you're going to work your whole life and come to the end of your life and have, what, Social Security? So what I was obsessed by is how do you help people understand that anyone can get financially set if they understand compound interest. So, compound interest. Yes, and most people have heard of it, yeah. but they don't apply it. All the experts say that's all it takes. It takes a small amount of money. So for example, I, uh, there's a man named Theodore Johnson who worked for UPS in the 1950s. He never made more than $14,000, but he retired with $70 million. Now how is that possible? Yeah, how is that possible? Because compound interest. A friend of him pulled him aside and said, I'm going to make you a wealthy man. He goes, I'm not going to be wealthy. He goes, I'm going to put a 20% tax on you. I was like, I can't afford that, I'm gonna make 14,000 a year. He said, listen, if the government raised your taxes 20%, you'd scream and yell, you bitch, and you'd pay it. Right. And you'd get used to it. <laughs> he said, this is not going to the government, it's going for you, and it compounded. But so people at home can understand, let's assume you have a, uh, a child who's 19 years old, 18 years old. You convince them, from the very beginning, to put $300 aside each month out of their money. Right. Once they automate it, they'll never know it's gone. They do that, if a young man does that from the time he's 18 to the, say 28, he does it for eight years, 27, eight years, it's 27, and he stops. Yeah. He'll put in less than $30,000. But if he leaves it in the market, the market's grown at 10% over 30 years. If you go 30 years later and he never put in more, then less than $28,000 is the exact number. Now, if his friend starts at 29 and does the same thing, but he invests all the way to 65 every month, he'll still end up with less money than his partner does. Okay. So, it's, so Guy stays for eight years when he's young? Yes. 
he will still dwarf the amount of money someone Even though he never added another dime because he started sooner. So the more time you have, the less money it takes. The second person has $140,000 in it, and he'll end up with less money than the first person. So compounding just simply means you want to get in the game, and you want to put a certain amount of money aside, automate it so you don't see it, put an investment account, and then I show you what the best investors do with that money right. and what you can do. But you got to start with that. you got to become an owner. A lot of the uncertainty today, and we've done surveys on this on the show, are about money and they're about politics. Yep. And they do work together. You've worked with all, you know, all the recent presidents, yeah. including the current president. Yes. What do you have to say to folks who feel really insecure about what's going on right now? I think we tend to overreact. Um, I had a great conversation. I was with President Clinton last weekend, who's been a friend for about 30 years, and I saw George W. Bush some months ago. And I asked him, George W., I said, are you worried? What are you doing? I said, first of all, I'm so, I've always respected you because you never attacked President Obama, even though you have a different approach. He goes, Tony, I'm no longer the president. Even though I didn't vote for him, he's the American president, so he's my president. I need to support him. I thought, that's really elegant. That's how we've always been as a society. But I asked him, I said, are you worried? He goes, well, he said, all this worry, he said, it's overblown. He said, when Nixon was impeached, I thought he destroyed America, destroyed the presidency, destroyed our reputation. I was wrong. He said, I became president. You already discovered the office is bigger than the occupant. There's three branches of government. And even if that person screws up, we're going to still do extremely well. We don't need to live in fear. You make a big mistake if you've been against America for two centuries, and it's still a big mistake if you do it today. It still is. All right, we'll be right back with a game-changing idea of fear. Stick around.